Today I've got a real easy beginner project I think you're going to enjoy. A biscuit cutter. This one I made out of Bradford Pear several years ago and I've got a sister-in-law that asked me to make her one so that's the one that made out of uh, amber mo ambrosia maple. Uh, you care, the, Generally you call, this is called uh, treen. What's treen you ask? Well, Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica uh, defines it as small wooden objects in daily domestic or farm use and in use in trades and professions. Train includes a wide variety of objects mostly used with tableware, the kitchen, games, personal adornment, to toilet articles. We don't use this, uh, the, the term train much anymore since plastic tends to replace a lot of wood. But let's go ahead and make, make some biscuit cutters. Makes a great gift. My name is Mike Peace and I'm passionate about wood turning and I want to help you with my tips, tricks, and techniques to become a better turner. If this is something you're interested in, please subscribe. Let's get started. Okay, for this project we're going to need a piece of wood um, about four inches uh, long or uh, 100 millimeter and about uh, two and three quarters to three inches uh, in diameter so that's close to uh, close to 70 75 millimeters you're going to put it between centers and and turn it round I'm using a step center step center means it's got these nice little teeth and it's got a spring-loaded uh, center okay basically we're going to use uh, Anybody doing this project probably use these three tools. We've got a spindle roughing gouge. We've got a parting tool. This is a quarter inch, but uh, you could make do with uh, uh, something a little bit smaller. Got a three eighths inch uh, spindle gouge. I've got a skew. Everybody wouldn't have to use this, but it does make it a little handier. And I've got a uh, square edge uh, scraper, in this case a box scraper, to help hollow the, the wall straight down on the inside. And we're going to round this thing off. I've got a speed of about 1500. Come back in this direction, come off the edge. Okay, now that we've got the edges knocked off, we can get the tool rest a little bit closer for support. And we can turn the speed up a bit. We're going to mark a tenon on here. And we're going to use a parting tool to bring that down. It is a little rough. So Square it up just a bit. Okay. Now we've got a nice uh, clean tenon, 90, perfectly 90 degrees, no trash in here, uh, and it'll match my uh, Tecna tool. Parallel shoulders because on that Tecna tool, as I've harped on several times before, it is not a dovetail when you're using it for a uh, tenon. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and put it on a chuck. I believe I said if I didn't, uh, any kind of tight grain wood will work. Uh, cherry does good. Uh, Bradford pear, maple. This happens to be a piece, piece of uh, maple. Turn it one more time. Tighten it. Turn it one more time. Tighten it, make it sure it's snug. Longer, I think, than we need. I've made a, a little storyboard. Uh, so this is a little longer than we need. I'm going to go ahead and part, part this down just a little bit, just so we don't have much, so much wood sticking out here when we hollow. Okay, that's going to be wasted. We're just going to part this off. Come back so it doesn't bind. We'll just set that scrap aside. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to hollow it out one inch deep. And, you know, this is basically the uh, model that we're going to be 
be following. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and mark the key, key dimensions with a storyboard. Uh, this thing is going to be one inch thick. We're going to have about three eighths inch wall on the, on the back side, which will take down just a little bit. Here's going to be the beginning of the knob. Here's going to be the ending of the knob. So this is going to be the depth. This is going to be the wall or the, or the top of it. This is going to be the bottom of the knob and the top of the knob. We'll worry about this later. Uh, first thing we're going to do is hollow it to, to that depth right there. Depth right there. Okay, I set my little uh, uh, shop made uh, depth gauge. I did a video on this a while back in case you missed it. Uh, so we can kind of spot check the, the depth as we go along. We're going to bring up the tool rest so we can cut right on center. Now we're going to use, we're going to hollow this with a 3 8 inch detail gouge, cutting right on center. Let's slow that down a little bit. I like to do this at about 1200. We're just going to drill a hole. Now, we're going to rest this. This is the flute. If it was in the center of a clock, straight up is 12 o'clock. Directly to the left is 9 o'clock. We're going to open this up at about 11, and I'm just going to pivot it, holding it down with my thumb, and just pivot the edge, and slowly let the tool do the work. Come back in, take another pass. Now, before we go all the way to the depth, and I've got another quarter inch or so to go, I'm going to go ahead and drill a couple of air holes. So when you're using this, it won't trap trap air. They'll they'll leak out. So we're going to uh, to mark a line across the center. And we're going to come out here, oh, somewhere close to three-eighths of an inch. Doesn't have to be exactly right. But we wanted to come up beside the handle and not drill into the handle. So let me uh, get a, put a quarter-inch uh, drill bit in my drill. That's one and five eighths inch from the cutting edge. Okay. We want to catch that early so we don't have any blowout. We don't want to uh, take this down here, same reason to have any blowout. So now we'll have a nice clean, clean hole. So now we can go in there and go down another old quarter of an inch or so. We're going to use this scraper, come across the bottom and go right down the sides here. We want a nice parallel wall sides. I'm going to just come along the bottom, see if I can't get rid of some of that tear out. got a lot of tear out there Whew. all right so how do we deal with tear out well we got a couple of ways to deal with that one way is to uh, put a little uh, wax in there so let's try that I'm gonna use some of this uh, Mahoney's finish uh, oil and walnut oil and just this should stiffen up the fibers just a little bit in there and it's a nice compatible finish since I'm gonna use this to finish this. This is a great finish for kitchen kitchen products. Uh, I have this on my uh, 
Amazon page if you all are interested in getting some of this finish. That small commission will help support my channel. All right, let's let's try that. I'm going to try something a little different. Instead of that square end, I'm going to use the uh, this skew as a negative rake scraper, and I hope that'll it won't be very aggressive, and hopefully it'll give me a nice smooth smooth finish. Okay. Still got a lot of a little bit of tear out. This uh, this maple is pretty soft. I think if I had bread for pear, it'd work a little bit a little bit better. But we'll just sand that with a coarse grit and not worry about it. All right, I'm gonna come down, come down that wall again with this flat scraper. We want these walls to be less than a quarter of an inch, maybe three thirty seconds uh, of an inch thick. And so I'm going to line this up. cleaned it up a little bit at the bottom so I've got a nice smooth very smooth wall I'm happy with that so now let's go ahead and kind of trim the end of just what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just scrape this a little I want a, a, a not a real sharp end but I don't want it rounded either so I'm just gonna use this to kind of scrape that around the edge here a little bit and then same thing on this side just kind of kind of bring it down It's, it's a bit thick. I think I'm going to take one more pass with a spindle roughing gouge. But before I do that, uh, let's double check the depth. And it's right, right at one inch, so that's good. So that puts us right here. This line right here is where we're going to part down. I'm going to go ahead and part down. I'm going to part, make it fairly thick because I'm going to come back probably and trim it up with a uh, skew to thin it down a little bit. And before we go more than about a half inch, you got to come back over with another parting cut so you don't get it to bind. This is going to be about three quarters of an inch thick, this shaft. And see that hole? Okay, so I see a hole on both sides. Bring it. Go ahead and. Any further, I want to just take that pass I was talking about, just thin this out just a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna knock off this sharp edge back here. Now 
And here's where we could use a skew, but since I've already got this in my hand, I'm just going to clean up any tear out from the parting tool with this spindle gouge. Just kind of just kind of dress the top a little bit. Take a, take a bit of a pass here. Okay, let's clean that up quite a bit. Again. Now, I'm going to go ahead and sand the inside and sand the outside. So, Okay, we did a little sanding. Now we're going to take this down a little bit further. I set this gauge to about uh, 7 eighths of an inch so we can set the, the thickness of this handle. It doesn't have to be real precise. Get that speed up a little bit. Okay. Now I'll bring the rest of it down to about the same. And now we're going to mark the top of that handle. We're going to bring it down some. We want the handle to be as thick as, as this. This is about three inches. We want to handle about two inches. See if it's getting close. Just a bit more. Okay. Now I'm going to use the uh, spindle gouge to round over the knob handle, skim down the side to clean up any tear out. Round it on the inside and just skim along the bottom. And then we're going to define the top of the handle. And I'm going to make this a little rounder. And Leave enough on it so I can sand and finish shaping the handle. Just a big bead. Rotate, lift, and swing. With a parting tool, then we'll just clean it up with a little sandpaper if we need to. Okay. All right, there we have it. Take a, take the sharpest tool I have around, which should be this skew, and kind of cut off that nib. We can take that over the belt sander, or just use a little, little coarse, coarse grit, like a hundred grit, and clean that up a little bit. We'd always put a mandrel in here, but I think this would be good enough. Now, I think we got a few little nibs out of that hole. 
what we're going to do is just take this sandpaper and twist it up into a little tube and just slide that in there to kind of kind of clean up some of those little nibs all right now let's put a little finish on it this uh, walnut oil and wax gives it a gets in the pores and gives it a nice matte sheen and makes it look good and it's easy to replenish and if you're interested in some other projects that I've got on Treen, which is small wooden practical objects for primarily the kitchen and toys and, and the lot, click on the link shown.